Hi, I'm Jane Squire Howden, co-chair of the Provincial Hip and Knee Working Group. And I'm Dr. Jason Worley, co-chair with Jane and an orthopedic surgeon from Calgary. Alberta is leading the country in the way people who require a hip or knee replacement are cared for. We are proud of the work that we do and at how well our patients and their families are cared for. We are always trying to improve the way we do things in order to provide you with the best possible experience. All of the surgeons who perform hip and knee replacement surgery in Alberta follow the same care path and work with a multidisciplinary staff of registered nurses, occupational therapists, physiotherapists, medical office assistants, dietitians, and clerks. All patients in the province of Alberta are provided with similar teaching and care based on the best evidence we can find. The focus is on you, the patient, with all of your surgeon visits, teaching, as well as many of the tests you require completed right here at the clinic. We work in partnership with Alberta Health Services to ensure that you have a seamless experience here and in the hospital. What you're about to watch is one of the tools that we use to teach you about your upcoming surgery. You have with you today a teaching book that provides you with the same detail that we will go over in this teaching video. We will be covering everything that you need to know before surgery, while you're in hospital, and once you get home. You and your surgeon have decided that you require hip or knee replacement surgery. If you're going to have surgery, it is important to know all you can about it, so you can be prepared and have a successful surgery. The goal of this program is to teach you what a joint replacement is, what to expect before, during, and after the surgery, and what you can do to help make your surgery a success. You will receive instruction from professionals experienced in the area of joint replacement. Included in this program are nursing, occupational therapy, and physical therapy. There you go, and if you have any questions, you can just call your case manager. You're welcome. These healthcare professionals will provide you with important information and instructions to help you prepare for your surgery and to help you recover successfully. Remember that successful joint replacement is a team effort. The team includes surgeons, nurses, therapists, dietitians, educators, and you. Being informed and following the instructions provided will help you return to a pain-free life and to the activities you enjoy. The knee is known as the hinge joint. In a healthy knee, smooth tissue called cartilage covers the surface of the bones in the joint, allowing it to move smoothly without pain. If the cartilage becomes worn away, such as with arthritis, the surface is no longer smooth. The result is pain and stiffness when moving. Knee replacement surgery is considered when the pain is severe enough to disrupt your daily activities, such as work, leisure, self-care, and sports. A total knee replacement involves replacing your damaged knee with an artificial joint. The artificial joint is made of a combination of metal and plastic. There are many types of artificial joints. Your surgeon will discuss with you which is the best type of joint to suit your needs. Following the surgery, the surgeon will also advise you about restrictions to your activities, especially those that put a lot of strain on your knees. What is hip replacement surgery? The hip is a ball and socket joint. In a healthy hip, smooth tissue called cartilage covers the surface of the bones in the joint, allowing it to move smoothly and without pain. If the cartilage becomes worn away, such as with arthritis, the surface is no longer smooth. The result is pain and stiffness when moving. Hip replacement surgery is considered when the pain is severe enough to disrupt your daily activities, such as work, leisure, self-care, and sports. A total hip replacement involves replacing your damaged hip with an artificial joint. This artificial joint may be made of metal, plastic, or ceramic. There are many types of artificial joints. Your surgeon will discuss with you which is the best type of joint to suit your needs. Following the surgery, the surgeon will also advise you about restrictions to your activities, especially those that put a lot of strain on your hips. Risks for surgery. Joint replacements are safe, but with all surgeries, there are risks. Please ask your surgeon about these risks. There is a list in your teaching book. Being prepared for surgery. 
First of all, you need to know what to do before the surgery. Being organized and informed ahead of time can help with the success of your surgery and lessen your stress when you return home. Try to be as healthy as possible. Follow a healthy diet, maintain a healthy weight, and get plenty of rest. Look after other health issues, such as dental, vision, prostate, and urinary tract problems prior to the surgery. Also, refill prescriptions to avoid running out in those first weeks after discharge. Stay active. Continue with all your regular activities. Begin doing the exercises provided to strengthen your leg prior to the surgery and add arm exercises to increase overall strength and stamina. Be informed. Review all the education material provided to you and write down questions or concerns to ask your health care providers. Make sure that you fully understand the surgery and what you are consenting to before you sign the consent forms. Arrange for help at home. You will most likely be in the hospital for three to four days. It will be much less stressful for you if you make plans for your return home prior to having surgery. Arrange for help with housework, personal care, meals, yard work, and errands. If you can, stock up on groceries and make frozen meals ahead of time. Also, have any required equipment and walking aids in place. Quit or reduce smoking. Smoking delays healing and can therefore lengthen the time it takes you to recover. It is best to cut back as much as you can or quit altogether. However, if you can't, do not alter your smoking habit the night before surgery. Be prepared for your discharge. It is very important that you have any required equipment before you go to the hospital for surgery. This will allow you to install the equipment if necessary and to practice using it. The equipment can be rented or purchased from a medical and surgical supply store, or it can be borrowed from family, friends, the Red Cross, or the community health unit. You should also purchase a hip kit, which includes adaptive equipment to assist you with dressing, bathing, and a hip cushion to raise chair heights. The team will inform you where you can purchase these items. Look in your booklet for a list of tips and items to assist you in preparing for surgery and for the list of required equipment and methods of obtaining the equipment. Please notify your case manager if your medical condition changes prior to surgery. This includes changes in your medications. If you develop open sores, boils, any reddened or inflamed skin, cold or flu, or dental problems. Also, please remember, do not use lotions or creams for five days prior to surgery on the affected limb. For specific do's and don'ts before surgery, see your booklet. The day before surgery. On the day before your surgery, be sure to drink plenty of fluids. Eat a light supper and do not drink any alcohol. Do not eat anything after midnight, even gum or candies no matter what time your surgery is. You may drink clear fluids up to four hours before your surgery. Clear fluids are liquids you can see through. For example, pop, clear tea, coffee with no milk or cream, jello or pulp-free juices such as apple and cranberry, no milk, cream, or orange juice. If at all possible, try not to smoke. The morning of surgery. On the morning of your surgery, bathe or shower with the bioscrub sponge that you were given at the hip and knee clinic. Rub the skin surrounding the area of the surgery as described in your booklet. Please remove nail polish from your fingers and toes and do not wear any makeup. Take only the medication you have been told to take with just a sip of water. If you are diabetic, do not take your pills or insulin in the morning. Your case manager at the clinic will discuss your individual medication instructions with you. What to bring to the hospital. You should bring any items that you require for personal care, such as toothbrush and toothpaste, soap and shampoo, deodorant, shaving items, hairbrush, housecoat, and pajamas. The clothing you should bring with you should be loose-fitting and easy to get into. Included should be loose pants and underwear, such as boxer shorts, socks, and supportive non-slip footwear. 
It is essential that you bring all of your medications with you in the original packages. Remember to include all prescription drugs, over-the-counter medications, herbal remedies, and inhalers. You will also need the recommended walking aids and dressing aids. Remember to label all of your personal belongings. While it is important to have some essential items with you, hospital rooms are small and have limited storage space, so pack sparingly in one small overnight bag. Do not bring any items such as cell phones or laptop computers, hair dryers and curling irons. Do not bring any valuable items such as jewelry or credit cards and limit cash to $20. Arriving at the hospital. When you arrive at the hospital, an admitting nurse will check you in. A healthcare provider will confirm that you have followed all of the required preoperative instructions and will help you prepare for your surgery. Make sure that you inform the nurse of any changes in your health since your last visit to the hip and knee clinic. The nurse will start an IV before you go into the operating room so you can be given fluids and medications during and after surgery. Most people are given a combination of medication to provide pain relief and reduce inflammation. The nurse will also take your vital signs, including blood pressure and temperature. You will be asked to mark your legs with the words yes and no to make sure the correct leg is operated on. In the operating room. Before going into the operating room, you will meet the anesthesiologist, who is there to give you sedation and pain control during your surgery. There are two types of anesthetic used, and the anesthesiologist will discuss with you the type of anesthetic that will be used for your surgery. The most common type of anesthetic used for joint replacement surgery is a spinal anesthetic, which is a freezing injected into the back that numbs the lower half of the body. You are also provided with sedation during the procedure. Alternatively, a general anesthetic may be used. Medication is given into your IV to put you to sleep during the surgery, and you will have a breathing tube during the surgery. The surgery itself involves making an incision in your hip or knee, removing the damaged joint, and replacing it with the artificial joint. The muscles are then sewn together, and the skin is also sewn or stapled closed. In the recovery room. After surgery, you'll be taken to the recovery room so your condition can be monitored. A nurse will monitor your vital signs and ask you to take some deep breaths. She will also ask you to do foot and ankle exercises. You may have a catheter in your bladder to collect urine. You may also have staples and a dressing over the operated area. You may also have a drain to remove any excess fluid and blood. You will likely remain in the recovery room for about an hour and then you will go to your assigned hospital room. In your hospital room. You will continue to be monitored in your hospital room. Pain control. Post-operative pain control is very important. Ask for regular pain medication from your nurse if you are uncomfortable. Do not wait until the pain gets too bad before asking for medication. When your pain is well controlled, you will be more comfortable, sleep better, move easier, heal faster, have less risk of infection, have less chance of blood clots, and able to move easily to do your therapy and exercises. Pain control is also important once you get home. It will allow you to carry out your daily activities and exercises with more ease and make your overall recovery less stressful. You will get a prescription from the hospital before you are discharged. If you run out of painkillers, please contact your family doctor. Note: Many painkillers cause constipation. Drink plenty of fluids and eat lots of fiber. If constipation is a concern before surgery, please let your case manager know. Blood thinners. In addition to pain medication, you'll receive a blood thinning medication. After surgery, there is a higher risk of blood clots, and this medication prevents these blood clots from forming. Your surgeon will decide what type of medication, pills or injections, that you'll need, and the nurse in the hospital will teach you what you need to know. While on any type of blood thinner, 
Daily blood tests are done while you're in the hospital and twice a week once you go home. You will get a prescription and a lab requisition for this. Rehabilitation in hospital. Generally speaking, a healthy recovery requires a combination of rest and exercise. In the first weeks after surgery, you will tire more easily. Include short, frequent breaks throughout the day, resting when you begin to feel tired. You will benefit more from a short, frequent walk than from one long one. Your rehabilitation will begin soon after surgery. Within four to eight hours after your surgery, you will be moving from your bed to a chair and will be standing and walking if you are able. You will also begin a rehabilitation program to improve the movement and strength in your new hip or knee. You will be allowed to put as much weight on your leg as you can tolerate unless your surgeon tells you otherwise. The physical therapist will teach you to walk with a two-wheeled walker and or crutches and teach you the exercises that are a part of your recovery. You must use your walker or crutches for six weeks. When you come for your six-week appointment with the physiotherapist, they will see you and give direction about using a cane. The team will evaluate your ability to perform your activities on daily living such as dressing, bathing, and home management. Use of your adaptive equipment such as dressing aids will be reviewed and recommendations and or modifications will be provided if you are having any difficulty. Finally, the healthcare team will work together to assess your level of mobility and home management skills. Based on their assessment, the team will recommend a discharge date and community services you may require. The overall goal will be to discharge you home in three to four days and when you are independent with the following. Getting in and out of bed. Getting on and off the toilet. Getting in and out of a tub or shower stall getting dressed, managing to go up and down stairs, exercises, walking with crutches and a two-wheeled walker. Avoid excessive leg swelling. Your surgical leg will swell after surgery. It is important to control the swelling as much as possible because the more swollen your leg is, the harder it will be to move, and this can increase the risk for developing a blood clot. Swelling can be reduced by elevating the entire leg above the level of the heart by using cold packs and by moving as much as you can. Keep the head of the bed as flat as possible. Elevate the entire leg on pillows with the knees straight and foot above your heart. Rest in this position three times a day for 45 minutes. Place a bag of peas or a bag of ice in a pillowcase and ice for 10 to 15 minutes, but no longer as you can get a burn from the ice. In the first three days after your surgery, your rehabilitation will include physiotherapy exercises that is required two times a day, walking to the bathroom and in the hallway, increasing the distance a bit each time, practicing bed and chair transfers, practicing toilet, tub, and car transfers, and dressing with the occupational therapist, and lastly, practicing stairs. Exercises. The following exercises should be done on both legs before and after surgery to improve your recovery. Do the exercises at least twice a day with five to 10 repetitions of each exercise, gradually increasing the frequency and the number of repetitions. First, we will start with knee exercises. Exercise 1. Lying on your back on a bed, bend your knee and hip by sliding your heel along the bed toward your buttocks. Your knee must always face the ceiling. Hold for a count of 5 seconds. Return to the start position. Exercise 2. Place a firm roll under your knee. Keeping the back of your knee on the roll, straighten your knee to lift your foot off the bed. Hold for a count of five. Slowly lower your foot to the bed. You can make a roll by using a towel folded lengthwise and rolled up. Using masking tape, duct tape, or large elastics to hold the roll together. Exercise three. With your opposite knee in a comfortable position, lift your leg, keeping your knee straight. Slowly lower your leg to the bed. Exercise four. With a small roll under your ankle, Push your knee down to the bed. Hold for a count of five 
and then relax. Exercise 5. Lying on your back, bend both knees while keeping your feet flat. Tighten your lower stomach muscles by pulling your belly button down towards your spine. Breathe normally, hold for a count of five, and repeat. Exercise 6. Sitting on a chair with your thighs supported, lift your foot to straighten your knee. Hold for a count of five. Return your foot to the floor. Exercise 7. Sitting with your foot on a smooth surface, slowly slide your foot back as far as possible. Hold for a count of five. Relax your foot forward. Exercise 8. With your feet flat on the floor, push up with your arms to lift yourself partially out of your chair. Hold for a count of five. Relax back down. Exercise 9. Hold onto the back of a stable chair. Bend your knee by lifting your heel toward your buttocks. Do not move your thigh forward. Hold for a count of five and slowly lower your foot to the floor. Exercise 10. Holding on to a steady chair for support, lift one knee as if to go up a step. Hold for a count of five. Put your foot back. Exercise 11. Holding on to the back of a steady chair, bend both knees while keeping your back straight. Hold for a count of five, then lift back up. Exercise 12. Sit on a steady chair and put both feet flat on the floor. Tighten your lower stomach muscles by pulling your belly button towards the back of the chair. Hold for a count of five and repeat. Knee movement precautions for three months after surgery. The knee precautions are outlined in your booklet. You should gradually increase your activities after surgery. However, some movements should be avoided to protect your new knee. Do not twist or pivot on your leg. Always keep your toes and your upper body facing the same direction. Take small steps when turning rather than pivoting on your leg. No extreme knee bending. Do not force your new knee to bend. It was not designed to bend into extreme positions. Do not squat or kneel to pick up objects from the floor. Use a reacher. Use a chair with the seat at a level higher than your knee, using a pillow or cushion to raise the height if necessary. Now we are going to do hip exercises. The hip exercises are in your booklet. Exercise 1. Lying on your back, roll your leg inward only until the toes point to the ceiling. Hold for 5 seconds. Exercise 2. Bend your hip and knee sliding your heel along the bed toward your buttocks. Keep your knee facing the ceiling. Exercise three, slide your leg out to the side and back to midline only. Keep your knee straight and facing the ceiling. Do not cross past the midline. Exercise four, place a roll under your knee. Straighten your knee, lifting your foot off the bed. Hold for five seconds, then lower your foot slowly. Exercise 5. Lying on your back, bend both knees while keeping your feet flat. Tighten your lower stomach muscles by pulling your belly button down towards your spine. Breathe normally, hold for a count of 5, and repeat. Exercise 6. With your feet flat on the floor, push up with your arms to lift yourself partially out of your chair. Hold for a count of 5. Relax back down. Exercise 7. Sit on a steady chair and put both feet flat on the floor. Tighten your lower stomach muscles by pulling your belly button towards the back of the chair. Hold for a count of five and repeat. For the remaining exercises, remember to keep an upright posture. Stand tall with your shoulders back. Use a stable chair for support. Exercise eight. Keep your back and legs straight. Move your leg out to the side, then back to midline. Exercise 9. Holding on to a steady chair for support, keep your back and legs straight and slowly move one leg behind you. Do not lean forward. Return your leg to the starting position. Repeat. Exercise 10. Holding on to a steady chair for support, lift one knee as if to go up a step. Hold for a count of five. Put your foot back down on the floor. 
and repeat. Exercise 11. Hold onto the back of a stable chair. Bend your knee by lifting your heel toward your buttocks. Do not move your thigh forward. Hold for a count of five and slowly lower your foot to the floor. Exercise 12. Holding on to the back of a steady chair, bend both knees while keeping your back straight. Hold for a count of five, then lift back up. Hip movement precautions for three months after surgery. These hip precautions are outlined in your booklet. There are many routine and automatic movements and activities that can damage or even dislocate your new hip after surgery. Initially, it is important to think about how you're going to move when doing activities to prevent yourself from accidentally moving in ways that could damage your hip. Simple precautions can protect your new hip. When you are bending, avoid bending your new hip past 90 degrees. Avoid bringing your knee higher than your hip when sitting. And avoid reaching down for objects on the floor. When you are turning, Avoid rotating your operated leg inward when standing, sitting, or lying. Avoid twisting on your operated leg when standing and walking. Avoid crossing your legs. Avoid bringing your leg across the midline of your body. Avoid crossing your legs at the knee or ankle when sitting, standing, or lying. You must have pillows between your legs when sleeping on your back or side. Listen to the instructions provided regarding weight-bearing. You must use your walker or crutches for six weeks. When you come in for your six-week visit with the physiotherapist, they will assess you and give you directions about using a cane. Going home. Most people are able to go directly home with an exercise program. However, no two people recover at the same rate. Keep in mind that some people require further therapy to assist them in their recovery. The surgeon and the healthcare team may recommend that you attend an outpatient physiotherapy clinic, a rehabilitation program, or an exercise program in your community. Remember, it is important to continue with your exercises once you return home. It is also essential that you walk as much as you can every day. This will help you have a speedy recovery. Managing at home. Transfers. Choose a chair with a firm seat and armrests. The chair height should be one to two inches above your knee when you're standing. If you are having hip surgery, you may need to raise the seat height. You can add a hip cushion. You should avoid low or soft chairs and chairs with wheels, rockers, or swivels. You may require a raised toilet seat and toilet armrest to assist you in using the toilet and you should make sure that the toilet paper is within reach. You should avoid low beds, soft beds, and water beds. The height of the bed should be one to two inches above your knee when you are standing. Use a reacher to pull up the bed covers instead of reaching. Remember, you can lie on your back or on your non-operated side with pillows between your legs. Tub transfers and bathing. You will not be able to sit in the bottom of the tub for three months. You must bathe seated in a recommended bathing chair placed in your tub or shower. Make sure you have everything you need to shower within easy reach, towels, shampoo, or soap. Test the water before you get into the shower. You may need to use a long-handled sponge, soap on a rope, or a handheld shower head to avoid excess bending. If at all possible, avoid small cars with low seats. You should sit in the front passenger seat with the seat reclined slightly and as far back as possible. The driver should park several feet from the curb if the vehicle is a car and next to the curb if the vehicle is a truck or SUV. A large plastic bag on the seat may help you with sliding into and out of the vehicle. If you are having hip replacement surgery, you may need to use your hip cushion in the vehicle. Driving is not recommended for six weeks after surgery. Self-care activities. There is equipment that you will need to help you while you are recovering from your surgery. Some of you will have to buy, and some of you will be able to get it on loan. Things to buy. Hip kit, hip cushion, and crutches. Equipment that you will need. Two-wheeled walker. 
tub or shower chair seats, tub clamp bar, raised toilet seat, toilet armrest, and a cane. Hip kit includes shoehorn, sock aid, reacher, and a long handled sponge. Dressing. The adaptive equipment in your hip kit should be used to help with getting dressed. Choose loose fitting clothes, including socks. Wear low heeled, fully enclosed shoes with velcroed closures or elastic shoelaces. You should dress seated on a chair and should dress the operated leg first and undress it last. Home management. It is very helpful to be organized at home prior to your surgery. If you do require additional help, community services are available. The occupational therapist will advise you about Meals on Wheels, home care, and homemaking services. Please be aware that you may have to pay for some of these services. In general, your daily activities will have to be altered or changed. Lifting and carrying items as you will have a walking aid. Bending for low or high items. Remove sliding doors from your tub and replace with shower curtains. You can't swing your leg into a tub with a glass door in the way. Arrange furniture so that you can get around with your walker or crutches. Have a high and firm bed. Have a proper chair with a higher seat and armrests. Remove all loose mats and clutter. Install handrails on staircase. You will require help with heavy housekeeping, such as vacuuming, washing floors, reaching for high objects, laundry, if you need to carry a basket, shoveling snow, and cutting the grass. You will also benefit from simplifying meal preparation and housework to conserve your energy and lessen your stress during the recovery period. Questions to ask your surgeon. Sometimes recovery recommendations can vary between patients. There are some questions you should ask your doctor. How soon can you drive? When can you do certain sports or activities you are interested in? Are there any activities you should continue to avoid? When can you travel? When can you return to work? What to bring to the hospital? Loose-fitting clothing, shorts or pants, socks, supportive non-slip shoes, walker and or crutches that are labeled with your name, hip kit, your patient information guide. Important. We have focused on providing you with information on what you can expect with your surgery. Here are some situations that are not part of a usual and healthy recovery. Call your case manager if you experience calf pain, if your incision is hot, red, excessively swollen or painful, or if there is drainage. The office hours are between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. Monday to Friday. If difficulty occurs after hours, call the emergency department. Call 911 if you experience chest pain, if you experience difficulty breathing. This may indicate a chest infection or a clot that requires immediate medical attention. This is elective surgery and it is expected that you will. Do your exercise every day and increase them as able. Increase your walking distance every day. If supervised physiotherapy is required, it will be arranged for you. Balance activity with rest, exercises, walking, icing, and elevating your leg. Be informed. Ask questions. Good luck. Hi, I'm Dr. Paulos Paul. The Hip and Knee Clinic at the Edmonton Musculoskeletal Center is an innovative and progressive method of delivering continuing care to our patients with hip and knee arthritis. As a surgeon working at the hip and knee clinic, I find the clinical experience extremely rewarding and I have every confidence that my patients will come through with a successful result. This video is the first step down that pathway. We have every confidence that your experience will be positive not only in your preoperative care, but also your surgical procedure and your postoperative recovery.